Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Griffin GFX. Welcome back to my channel. So before we get into this video, I just wanted to thank you all again for 50,000 subscribers. Like that number is so crazy to me. I'm actually gonna be doing a Q&A. So I want all of you listening right now to go into the comments. There's a pinned comment. It's gonna say, leave me a question. I want you to reply to it and ask me anything. It can be something personal or it can be about my career. Anyway, thank you again for 50K. Let's get straight into this video. So around two years ago on this channel, I made a DJ logo tutorial. And although DJ logos really haven't changed much since then, I have. I'm now a way better designer and I think I can make a way better improved video. So I'm gonna try and make this for the designers, but also for the DJs who wanna go ahead and make it for themselves. Maybe you don't have the money to pay a graphic designer to do it for you. I'm gonna try and keep this video simple enough so that you DJs can go and make it yourselves. You could be a rapper, a record label, uh, or maybe even something outside of the music scene, to be honest. It's just a simple iconic logo. On screen right now I've gathered a bunch of reference logos that all fall within the vibe that I'm going to be teaching in this video so if you like this aesthetic then this video is definitely for you. I'm going to be sharing brushes and fonts that I used in this video. I actually found a load of fonts that I think will make very cool logos. Everything is for free. You can get the Dropbox links down in the description so drop a like and subscribe if you like the content. So with that being said boys and girls, ladies and gentle frogs, let's get straight into the video. Shkeet. Alright guys, let's open up Photoshop and let's get going. So something I try to avoid with my videos is just teaching one style of logo in a video because then you end up with a lot of people with the exact same logo. Instead, I'm going to be picking a few of my favourites from this thumbnail page that I've got up on screen right now. If I didn't pick the one that you wanted or maybe you want a more advanced logo tutorial, then leave a comment because I might be making a part two depending on how well this video does. But anyway, the first one I'm going to be focusing on is up here. You see where it says optional uh, and here where it says south. These are called script logos or maybe hand lettering brush logos. I'm not sure exactly, but they're usually called script logos. You will find this kind of font on the Trap Nation logo. And it's actually really easy to take a font and to make that look quite powerful. So that's where we're gonna begin. So make sure you've downloaded the fonts page from the description. You can go ahead and you can find Bonbon. Bon. I really like Bonbon. Bon. There's gonna be a lot of different script fonts. You can check them out online. That font is a really good website to use if you're looking for new fonts. But let's go ahead and make a new document. So I'm gonna go one. 20 by 180 and I'm gonna drag this oh wait delete that layer I'm gonna drag this text here so they're all called the text that you see is what the font actually is uh, so bonbon bon, obviously the font is called bonbon bon. so we're gonna drag it over here and I'm gonna make the background black with most DJ logos they're usually white on black I'm not sure exactly why I think it makes it look a bit more like fun and stylish instead of kind of professional like I'm not saying they're not professional but you know what I mean less corporate and more artistic so here's our font let's go for DJ be DJ frog so if you use alt and then left arrow and right arrow you can change the spacing it's important to get your spacing right so I'm gonna go for that I think that looks cool so this bit here obviously needs tweaking so I'm gonna rasterize this text using the pen tool I'm just gonna go from here down to here and then we're gonna cut this area here out like that and then I'm gonna go from here down to here just so we get a slightly smoother stroke like that. All right, I just realized I'm being stupid. We actually want the background to be white for this logo. I always do my videos real time if I can. So sometimes there are little mistakes. So bear with me. And then we're going to make the stroke black like that. That's how we want it. And then we're going to hit OK and we're going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to pick the layer underneath and I'm going to slide it like this. And I'm going to blending options and I'm going to make the color of it black like that. So you can see what we're going to do here is we're going to make it kind of three dimensional, a very easy way of making the, the logo pop a little bit more without it looks like that and with it looks like that. So now obviously this is a little bit messy. So we're now going to make a new layer underneath this one and we're going to fix this with a black brush. So what you do is you're going to want to see here, for example, if it was 3D, you wouldn't see this little dip here. It would go from here to there like that and from here to there like that you see what I'm doing I'm gonna go around the image and I'm gonna fill in all the little mistakes that there are currently so here's a good example of seeing what I'm doing you want to click at the highest point and then go to the, the highest point of the layer that's underneath like that So there you go guys. Oh, I missed one a little bit here. So there you go. That's a hella simple way of making a very, very clean logo. Now a little quick way of improving this. If we merge all of these layers together, if we select using the magic wand, the white, 
make a layer above, paste the white back in there. So now we have like the white layer on top and then we'll make a clipping mask for that layer. And I'm going to use a black brush and I'm going to find the halfway point and I'm just going to slide it all the way along like that. And then if you drop the opacity so that it's really, really low, you get this, this shadow effect. I see this used quite a lot, which looks quite nice. But if you want to go that step ahead, then what I would do is I would remove that and then I would add your own strokes. So you could go like this, for example. If you pick so it's coming from the bottom right, you have to keep it consistent throughout. Then you can add your own shadows that look like this. So then it would be there and it would also be like coming up here like that, for example, like that. And then here it would also be going like that. So you can see how that G is now starting to look three dimensional. It looks very cool. Um, so this is a way of making a logo in literally like under 10 minutes, you'd have a nice professional looking logo finished. Right, so logo number two is gonna be this one that says don't wait. I feel like this is a way of making a DJ logo that's a little bit more playful, a little bit more fun and less serious. So if that's the kind of vibe that you're going for with your brand, then let's go ahead and do that one. So for this one, we will make the background black. I'm not gonna mess up this time. Makes sense to do it. <laughs> um, so the font that I'm going to use that I found is uniform. I think this is a good font to start with. Obviously, it is quite different from the example I showed you, but we're going to be modifying it. So let's drag that in. And now let's type out what our um, DJ name is going to be. So I'm thinking gang shit, you know. <laughs> All right. So what we want to do is we're probably going to rasterize this straight away and we want to start getting creative. So I'm going to move this down. Um, we're going to tilt all the letters a little bit because you probably saw in the example, it's a little bit wonky. In fact, let me bring the example in here to make things simpler. So you can see all the letters are like a little bit wonky, a little bit out of shape. I think this is a pretty cool effect. Uh, I like how the N kind of flicks down there. So I'm going to do that with this N here as well. Have it going like this. Like that. Now we'll take the I and the T and we'll move it up because we've got some empty space and you never want empty space on your logo. It just doesn't look very good. So blam, something like that. So what I'm going to do now is we want this nice kind of fixed width, but also with the curved edges. So I'm going to draw this myself using a brush. I'm going to lower the opacity and then I'm going to go get my brush out. I'm going to pick a brush that I think is fitting. Yeah, I like this because of the texture it's got on actually. That's quite cool. We'll see, we'll see how that looks. So I'm gonna be shift clicking. So we'll get the little curve like that. Shift click up to here, go like that. Shift click to there. All right, perfect. We select all of the black in the middle and go to the layer underneath and then select, modify, expand, and maybe expand by around four. And then we can draw it in and it's all gonna go in nice and smoothly. I think now that I've done it, it would have looked cooler if we used an even thinner brush, but um, this is basically it. We just need to add some more effects to it, merge these together and to pick our colorway. So I'm gonna go for a little bit of a gradient. All right, I'm now going to be using this brush down here. It's called a render brush. It looks like this. I'm going to be using it just for its kind of soft edges with a bit of texture. And I'm going to be doing what they did in the logo, which is little bits here under the T and under the D. Um, I'm going to just show you. Stop talking and just show you. If I go like this, for example, and you want to do this on a clipping mask layer above the logo and just give it one click like that. Maybe it needs a little bit more, actually, a few clicks. You get that effect and then you can lower the opacity and you can see it kind of just looks like it's a little bit three dimensional. So maybe we'll do that on the H. Yeah, I quite like that. And then we'll do it on the A in the same place that we did it on the H. Continuity is important when doing stuff like this if you want it to look good. All right, that looks nice. We'll lower the opacity so it's a little bit less extreme. I'm now gonna make another clipping mask layer and I'm gonna add the texture type stuff that's on top. So I'm gonna find a brush that's gonna make my life a lot easier. All right, I'm gonna use this one. It's a charcoal brush. I'll try and put this in the description as well. I'm just gonna click in a few different places and then I'm gonna drop the opacity just so we have a little bit of texture on it like that. So there you go, guys. That's basically the logo. 
Um, like I said, this is going to look a little bit nicer and sharper if you do it with a slightly smaller brush. That was my mistake. All right, so now we're going to do one more logo. I'm thinking of doing this one up here that says shock. So it's quite simple, but the idea is you get to integrate a symbol into your text and do it in a way that looks kind of really powerful and modern instead of just looking messy. So let's go ahead and pick the text that we're going to use first on a new document. All right, so the font that we're going to be using is Raider Crusader. So instead of a lightning bolt, I'm actually going to use a star like the one on these shoes. I think this is cool with the little like the lightning bolt flick that it's got coming off it. And basically, we're going to have this swap out for the A, I'm thinking. So we've got to be a little bit clever with this and work out how we're going to do it. Um, but the first thing to do is to rasterize this. So we'll make it a bit bigger first because once you've rasterized, you can't make it any bigger rasterize and let's delete the a and the star is going in its place so let's make it the right size now you want to find uh, a place in your word where things connect so what i mean by this is you can see here i'm able to make this y that uh, this uh, lightning bolt connect to the y like this so it's actually going to look very cool i'm going to modify the star slightly as well to make it connect with the letter better uh, so let's do that i'm going to lower the opacity of this as well slightly and make a new layer and then I'm going to draw the star and the Y exactly how I want it so that they work together instead of against each other. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll have it coming up to there. And then we don't want it to go down exactly as the Y is because I think it's going to make the bolt look a bit strange. And then we'll remove the star that's underneath. And then we're going to add a black stroke to this. I think around that width is good. And now we're going to turn the Y back up. So you can see how that actually connects really nicely in my opinion and then this star fits into this area here quite nicely as well. You could make it a little bit bit bigger and then have it kind of jolting into the, the L, that might look cool. But for now I think it's good like this. So now we're just going to work on the next phase which is to put this all together and to add one stroke to the entire thing. So how we're going to do that is by merging these layers together. Uh, and then we can delete the stroke on this now. Um, rub out these little bits here like that. And yeah, now we should have everything as one object. We can um, pick a cool color for the star. And now if we make the background white, then we can make uh, put a stroke onto everything. So having done that, that's made me realize that we need to move all the letters closer together in my opinion. Um, the stroke needs to be bigger as well. So I'm thinking like that and now let's move the letters in a little bit closer. And now we'll go to the layer underneath and what we're going to do is we're going to add our own stroke so that the stroke isn't curvy. So we're going to use the pen tool and we're just going to click like this and then we're going to fill fill it in not with that brush with a normal brush. It's actually really important to do this it makes your logo look way sharper. Um, sometimes curved edges are nice, but most of the time you're going to find that you want to kind of customize the stroke yourself. Here you can see where I've curved this bit. It doesn't look very good because this part of the Y is not curved. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make this part of the Y um, square. I feel like this bit under here is a little bit too thin. Um, we don't want it as thick as the star because it's going to take too much away from the Y. But I think we should probably make it a little bit thicker. So we'll start maybe from here and work our way up to the top. And then I also feel like this bit here is a little bit too pointy low key. All right, so it's a very gay name, DJ Play. Um, but uh, yeah, that's basically how I would make this logo. Uh, I think this is quite cool. I did something quite similar to this to a client a while ago. Um, so yeah, I figured I would share share the creation behind it so there's all the free logos that i've made they're all of different styles if you'd like me to go into more depth with some other other styles other dj logos um maybe one of the ones in the thumbnail that i didn't do or maybe you have your own dj logos leave me a comment i always take your guys advice uh, and i might be making a part two of this video as well comment down below if you're still listening right now comment um chicken flap i want to see who made it right to the very end anyway guys that's all from me take care and peace